decided to join us um, to worship our Lord. Uh, the announcements, no unusual uh, or different announcement than what's up on the board um, from me as an elder. Um, Alma has one uh, short announcement that she's going to share with us. Uh, again, Pastor Haler is with us this morning. We uh, welcome him um, to help us serve our Lord. Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to give you a quick update on the call committee. Uh, <clears throat> nothing has really, really changed. Um, nothing's happening. There really are no men available for us right now. Uh, it's just slim pickings, right, Pastor? Yeah. And so we're moving along, I think, quite well, considering our circumstances. So I have called, uh, Pastor and I talked yesterday, and we have decided that we're going to put the call committee on inactive status, which doesn't really mean anything. But, and we can stoke it back up again anytime we need to. But I just want to let you know that we're working, we're trying to get somebody, but just ain't nobody. Just ain't nobody there. So, uh, uh, well, anybody, nobody there yet. Yet, right, right. God is still working on it. Yeah. So there's. There's more openings for pastors than there are pastors available. So we're not the only ones that have this problem. But I think we're being well served by the pastors that come. And I think we're moving along just fine. So that's where we stand right now. So if you're on the call committee, I've already contacted you, but we're inactive right now. Okay? Any questions? Very good. Thank you. Well, I'd like to. I got one, and then I'll give it to you, sir. Yeah. Um, I went on my private account and I had 117 some odd, and some odd cents on my private choice dollar. So if you you got to go ahead and get that stuff allocated to go to somebody, you know. And I sent mine to the uh, preschool, but if you if you don't go on there and allocate it to someone, you're gonna lose it. And some uh, PRC could use it. Uh, any charitable organization, they got a list of them. 
or if you've got one, you can put it down, but you can allocate your assignment choice on it. So, I, like I said, go get that done today. It's going to be cold out here, so you can sit in there at your computer for a cup of coffee, and it takes you about 10 minutes. Okay. Oh, yeah. One other um, thing I should say. You know, I've been here several times, but I never formally introduced my ministry partner. And so this morning, Edith, would you please come up here? And <laughs> so just come on. I know, you know, us Lutheran pastors, we go around and it looks like we never have wives, but we do have wives. <laughs> and they do. And they do do a whole lot of work for the church. I could not be doing what I'm doing without her. Her name is Edith. I mean, she's been here several times and I've never introduced her. So this is Edith. Yeah. We've been married for about how many years now? About 35. Yeah. <laughs> about 35 years. OK. Thank we, you. We, we begin our service this morning. I want to welcome you, and I want to welcome you here at Prince of Peace, and I want to welcome my uh, home church family of Incarnate Word, Stone Mountain, and they are tuning in from their homes and from in Georgia and out of Georgia. We are awfully scattered. We have people in South Carolina and Illinois and every place. <coughs> so I really want to welcome you this morning. The service is um, Divine Service 2 from the Lutheran Service Hymnal. Let us stand and sing our first hymn, hymn number 673, Jerusalem, My Happy Home. by remembering our baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, 
Testament reading for the second Sunday in Lent is from Jeremiah chapter 26. When Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate and without inhabitants? And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seat in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserved the sentence of death because he has prophesied against this city as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now, therefore, mend your ways and your deeds, and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as you seem good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth, the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God.
epistle is from Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 through 4, 1. Brothers, join me in imitating me, and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly, and their glory is their shame, and mine set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like the glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown. Stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God.
brothers and sisters. Holy Father, we come to you this Sunday morning to give you your thanks and praise. We thank you for waking us up this morning in the land of the living and propelling us by the power of the Holy Spirit to offer our prayers, our sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving. We ask that you might come by and bless your word in Jesus' name. Grace, mercy, and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, it's not an understatement to say that we live in a time when the world needs the witness of faithful prophets more now than ever before. We cannot rely on the political and cultural leaders to provide for our economic needs. And certainly, they're not interested in our spiritual needs. The economy is now in full decline. With rising inflation and the hardship, it is dealing working class families and the elderly the failing capital markets, and its negative effects on retirees are ominous uh, signals of hard times ahead, to include unemployment and fallen incomes. Our political leaders are either lying or confused when they claim that they are not responsible. But we should not be surprised. They say one thing and do another. They say they believe in science, but claims a person can change gender at will, denying the science of genetic. In the same way, they, they deny the laws of economic science by believing they can increase the supply of money and will have no effect on inflation. And then we're still facing the possibility of global war. As of this morning, bombs are being dropped on the doorsteps of Poland. Instead of preparing to defend ourselves against those who would destroy our tradition, or traditional way of life, or values, or freedoms, or, or civic leadership seems preoccupied with institutionalizing in our society every human behavior that is against nature and against God, God's righteous decrees. There seems to be an idea that people are essentially good and will, in the end, do things right. There is also a popular notion of human progress, of being on the right side or wrong side of history, and that history moves in geometric progression. We know different we know that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The horrors of bombed out cities, the, 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 the ha and bombed out hospital, the trenches for mass graves of the civilians should remind us of the total depravity of humanity. History is not linear. It moves in circles because of the fallen condition of humanity. And that is why we need a savior. We don't have to look overseas or to see how bad it is. We don't have to look to Europe. Turn on the TV and you see people throwing other people off the the train platform on oncoming trains, and we see we see the, the catalog of crime. We hear the cat, catalog of crimes 
in our cities all reminders of our spiritual decay. The church, which is the foundation upon which our values are based, is in decline. There is a decline in church attendance, decline in giving. To, to the work of the church, there are fewer, fewer and fewer men entering the pastoral vocation. We see instead a rise of another form of idolatry called narcissism under the banner, banner of identity that motivates secularism. What seems to matter in our society most is I and me. How I feel about it. What benefits me? What affirms me? What makes me feel comfortable? Scripture has no role except for the few verses that we find useful to deceive ourselves and others. Worship, in its truest sense, is becoming relatively unimportant. unimportant. We must repent or we will perish. If Jesus was standing right here today, he would say, repent. The world needs to repent. The church needs to repent. The country needs to repent. The individuals need to repent. There needs to be all round repentance. This condition of our society today is not really new. The world has been there before at various times in history. In fact, a similar situation existed in the time of the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, God, in his mercy, sent his prophets to tell his people to repent. Repent, or it could get worse. Repent, because the worst, or the worst, is yet to come. We, as pastors who stand in the threefold office of Christ, are the modern-day prophets who tell of God's mercy, who God in his mercy has sent to proclaim repentance and the forgiveness of sin. So the word of God again today is repent, repent, repent. Stop looking to the world for affirmation, for status, for identity. Stop relying on the things of the world to save you from what is and what is to come. Start living for Christ and by life, by your life, proclaim his saving grace. It is not easy in our culture Because that seems to be counter to the culture. To live the Christian life comes can, with a cost. Sometimes cost of friendship, cost of relationship, but jobs, you name it. And even when these are not in play, sometimes can't be bothered to share the good news, which seems to be bad news to others. Because we fear rejection. Or because 
We believe that no one fears, no one wants to hear, no one is listening. Sometimes even those who God specifically called to the task would run away like Jonah. He didn't want to go. There are many who God has called you and I in different capacities who run away. But there are those who are faithful. There are those in scripture who are faithful. Those who he has called. Jeremiah was faithful. He heard God's call to be the prophet and to deliver God's word to the re religious leaders of his time. Jeremiah went to the temple to preach. His principal hearers were the priests, and the message for them was repent, or this city will be destroyed, and this holy place be like Shiloh. Shiloh was the place of the tabernacle in which the Ark of the Covenant was placed that ark signifying the presence of God. Shiloh remained the high place significant for about 400 years until the time of the prophet Samuel. And you know, reading the first few chapters of 1 Samuel of the evil priest Eli, and what happened to him. That was the end of Shiloh. The city was destroyed. The temple, the tabernacle was no more. The Ark of the Covenant was taken. Those people took God for granted. They turned to idolatry and became so depraved that God allowed the Philistines to conquer them into battle, to destroy their tabernacle, and to take their ark away. When Shiloh was gone, it was a symbol of God himself leaving. God sent Jeremiah to the temple issue a warning. You don't want to be like Shiloh. Then as now the Lord was speaking to his people to tell them that for their sake he will save the nation. That is if his people repent. Our faithfulness will determine whether we exist as a people in this country, as a free people. When the church is gone, there'll be no more free America. I tell you, that starts from, I gather that from reading the scripture. Jeremiah went into the temple. He spoke the words of God. He says, this is what God tell me to tell you, but who wants to hear? Bad news when they're having a good time. No one. And it was bad news for them because they had no intention of repenting priests and the temple leaders, instead of repented, repenting, wanted to cancel, to kill Jeremiah. They were happy in their condition. They were happy 
with their sins. Even more, they did not want others to hear this message of God's love and saving grace. They charged Jeremiah with capital offense. They said that this man deserves death for a crime of prophesying against the city and the temple. What they were saying, they didn't want to hear God's word. They made that accusation, a false accusation. They twisted and misinterpreted his words so that they can make a false accusation. This was a fake accusation to make fake news designed to incite the people against the prophet and to remove him from the scene. There is nothing new under the sun. Jeremiah defended himself by saying, listen, all I am doing is to tell you what God told me to tell you. Sometimes people ask me about different topics, and I would say to them, it doesn't, they, ask, they would ask, well, what, what do you think? I said, it doesn't matter what I think. What does God's word so, it's not about me. It is about God's word. And this is what Jeremiah was saying. This was his, his defense. They had twisted his words to say that somehow they're going to be defeated for no reason. That God was just angry with them and had no way out. And they had no way out. But what he was saying, his real message was, repent. God loves you. He wants you to be saved from a miserable future. God wants you to be saved from the pain and suffering which your sins are causing. He wants you to be saved from the shame and humiliation of captivity and slavery. God wants you to be free, free to love him, free to serve him, free to worship him, free to live in the joy of knowing him, the joy of your salvation. That was the message. They missed it. They missed it. Well, Jeremiah delivered this message. And it wasn't easy for him. You see, Jeremiah was in a very dangerous position. It was very dangerous to be a prophet, to speak out against the, the, the authorities, the secular and the spiritual authority of his time. There was, there was a contemporary um, prophet named Uriah who more or less preached the same thing. And soon he found out that the king was going to kill him, so he escaped to Egypt, but then he was brought back and brutally murdered for proclaiming God's word. There are places in the world today where preaching the clear word of God brings punishment. We just had one bishop and one 
and one pastor tried for doing just that in Finland. But Jeremiah was confident in the Lord and the Lord's promise, and he was obedient to death. Jeremiah was the forerunner of Jesus. Jesus had preached the same sermon of repentance, and he met with the same resistance. The evil leaders of the temple twisted his message from one of salvation to one of insurrection. They told lies about him. They shamed him. They humiliated him. But through it all, we can still hear his voice in the garden. Father, if it were possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless. Not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus was faithful to his calling and obedient to his father. He went to the cross so that even if in this life we suffer, even if in this life we are oppressed, by those who hate us for who we are or for no reason, we would escape the curse of hell and the grave. He went to the cross to bring us new life in time and eternity. We ought not to be without hope because we know, brothers and sisters, that the one who believes, in whom we believe, loved us and called us before the foundations of the world, and he is a mighty warrior who would defend us, who loves us, who redeems us. Saves us. It is my prayer today that we as the church, the baptized people of God of every denomination, will respond to the prophetic message of repentance, not just to save ourselves, but to save our community and to save our country. Let us stand and, and confess our faith, what we really believe. That one day the Lord will come back and we'll be with him. We do the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Continue our worship with our tithes and offering, remembering that it is more blessed to give than to receive, and remembering that God, God's word, that he will always remember, that he's just and will always remember.
the goodness, the kindness that you have restored to his people. continue with the prayers of the church. how much, how many still walk as enemies of the cross of Christ and face destruction. Make known your mercies in Christ, that they may repent and become citizens of your kingdom. Protect your people from their evil intentions and grant that we may follow the example of the apostles who, are, who willingly suffered wrong to make Jesus known. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remember the households of this congregation, of these congregations, O oh Lord. Provide help and companionship for those who live alone and foster love between husbands and wives, parents and children that our homes would not be place, places to worship or bed. Glory in shame or set our minds on earthly things, but a refuge here and a foretaste of our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remember our nation and those who have placed you are placed in authority, O oh Lord. Give them wisdom, integrity, and grant that neither they nor the citizens of our land would hinder your church or despise your call to repentance. Lord, in your mercy. Remember the sick and afflicted, O oh Lord, especially Ivory, Chandra, Ivana, Fitzgerald, and those we name in our hearts. Deliver them for the sake of Christ who cast out demons and perform cures. 
on his way to finish his course at the cross. Strengthen their faith to hold fast to him who rose again to rise them also. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Yeah. Remember this household of faith, O Lord, and gather us together at your altar as a hand gathers her brood under her wings. Unite us in true confession of your word. Sincere repentance for our sins and joyful confidence in your son's body and blood for our forgiveness, Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Holy God, we deserve nothing but judgment and disaster for our sins. Open our eyes so that we do not take your wrath lightly, but strive by grace to mend our ways and our deeds. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Yes. Almighty God, your Son suffered the reproach of mankind, even as he bore all of our sins to the cross. Strengthen us gladly to bear reproach in your name and boldly to declare your salvation through Jesus Christ. Your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of sacraments on the page. On page 177. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those you have created and sent your only begotten Son in our flesh, 
to bear our sins and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished by us for by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat your, his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this is the cup of the New Testament of my blood which was poured out for you and for me as often drink it, do it in remembrance of me. As oft as we eat, eat this, we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink. You lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension from heaven into heaven, and your coming to the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May it keep and preserve you in the true faith into everlasting life. Go in peace. It's going.
us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, LSB 763.
I want to uh, make sure that um, uh, we welcome any visitors that we might have here today. Are you all visiting for the first time? No, we're many times visiting. You're many times visiting. Yeah, well, okay. They're going to be joining shortly. And we, <laughs> so we, we welcome you. And we will see you there. Yeah, and that is um, Emily. Emily is a, used to be a student of mine. I'm sorry my students follow you around. <laughs> 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 She's a member of our congregation on the other side of town. Um, right. And uh, I've been Thank telling you. them, you know, let me go over. <laughs> That's fine with me. So, um, Emily, it's good to see you. And I know that you visit friends around here. And please let everybody know that I'm over here sometime, and y'all need to come and worship with us. Okay? Yes. Anything else? Oh, good. Birthdays. Um, huh? Birthdays. Any birthdays? Yes, Bill's. Oh. Bill. Bill. Oh.
No, I told him all the time he's a business. And he said, yes. He said, yes. Really? Yes. It makes time, girl. And I, it, it is. And I, when I thought he had missed my way. Oh, my God. Oh, he's giving you that dress? He gave me the exact address, but I still missed my way. Where did you end up? I went for the... I have to turn around like six minutes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Even on this, that day, I mean, we lost our sweet last night. And I didn't sleep well. Oh, last night, you guys went out? No, it was a uh, different time. Oh, okay. <laughs>